Okay, in this clip we're going to be talking about composition of functions and this is a really important concept that you have learned both both in Algebra 2 and in pre-calculus and it's used again in calculus when we study the chain rule. So knowing how functions fit inside of other functions, how that all works is, is pretty important, especially when we get to Chapter 2. So we're going to review by looking at one example. I give you two functions, two parent functions, f of x and g of x, and they're defined in blue and red on the top. And for part one, we have to find f of g of x and find the domain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write f in blue. The function is defined to be in blue up there. And then g of x, I'm going to replace it. g of x is written in red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it in red. Just replace it with its definition, and it's defined to be x over x plus 5. Now, this particular notation says, go to the f function, and wherever you see an x, replace it with this new thing that's on the inside. So if I go to the f function, I have 1 over, and then I have x minus 2. But then this, this old x is going to be replaced with the new stuff, which is going to be x over x plus 5. So in making this substitution, we're making a complex fraction. It's looking a little scary here. But I've got a nice way to fix the problem really, really easily. So we have a complex fraction now. And what I'm going to suggest we do is partition the whole thing off with grouping symbols, like this. And students have a variety of ways of doing this, but I'd really like you to try to acclimate to this way because it comes up later on and it's just quick and easy and if we're all on the same page it just makes it a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my sub-denominators. And the sub-denominator, the denominator within the denominator is this x plus 5. Now sometimes there's just one thing as there is here, but other times there are multiple things and you've got to find the LCD of all of those things. But in this case I'm just going to use x plus 5 over x plus 5. That's a useful form of 1. Multiplying something by 1 is not going to change the answer at all, but it's hopefully going to make it look different. So now on the top we have x plus 5, and on the bottom, if we distribute this x plus 5 here into each of these terms, into this guy and into this guy, it's going to cancel for the first dis distribution, leaving us with just x. And then for the second distribution, we're going to have a negative 2 and then the x plus 5. So in that one step, we've gone from having a complex fraction to not having a complex fraction. And that's what we wanted. So now we have x plus 5 on top. And then downstairs, we're going to have x minus 2x, which would be negative x minus 10. So this is the composition of functions f of g of x. Now it also asks us to find the domain. And finding the domain of a composition requires knowing what the domain of the inside function is and also the domain of the result and seeing where they intersect. So for this, tip, for this type of problem, we have to look at the inner function. And we're going to see where it intersects with the result. So the inner function is this guy here in red. And this guy could be anything except for negative 5. Negative 5 would produce a 0 in the denominator. Now if we look at the result, x can be anything except for negative 10. So there are two things that x cannot be. x cannot be negative 5 and x cannot be negative 10. So that means the overall domain is going to be anything except those two things. So I'm going to say negative infinity to negative 10 union negative 10 to negative 5 union negative 5 to infinity. So the negative 10 and the negative 5 are the two things that it cannot be. Sorry that I couldn't write that all in the same line there, but it just ran out of space. Okay, so we answered the, the composition question and we also answered the domain question. Let's do it again for problem number two. We'll probably go a little faster because it's the same basic idea. So now I'm doing g of f of x. So to use my color again, I'm going to use g of now this time the inner function is f of x, and f of x is blue and it's 1 over x minus 2. So that's what I'm going to write on the inside, 1 over x minus 2. Okay, now this notation says go to the g function and wherever you see an x, you're going to replace it with this new thing that's written in blue. So it's going to be blank, 
over blank plus 5. Well, what goes in the blank? This new expression that's in the parentheses, which is going to be 1 over x minus 2. And as you may have guessed, we have another complex fraction. But this is really just another opportunity to practice, so think of it as a good thing. So I've partitioned this off, and now I'm going to think about what the LCD is. And I'm going to look at my little denominators, and I see x minus 2 and x minus 2, and, and that's it. That's easy. x minus 2 over x minus 2. This is a useful form of 1. It's going to make this complex fraction not complex very, very quickly. So I'm going to distribute. Uh, 1 over something times itself, that's just going to cancel, so we're just left with 1. That couldn't be any easier. Now I'm going to distribute this into this and then into that. And just like the problem before, the first distribution we're going to cancel, so we're going to be left with a 1. Then we have plus 5 times the x minus 2. Cleaning this up, we're going to have 1 over 5x, and then we have 1 minus 10 which is negative 9 or minus 9. So this is the composition of functions for g of f of x. But now we've got to find the domain again. And the domain is, again, the inner intersected with the result. And here, x cannot equal 2. And then over here, x cannot equal 9 fifths. So those are the two things that x cannot be. And if they can't be those two things, they can be anything else. So here we go. Hopefully this will fit. I'm a little bit nervous, but I think we'll work it out. Uh, negative, negative infinity to 9 fifths, which is, yeah, 1 and 4 fifths. Union 9 fifths to 2. Union 2 to infinity. Look at that. We got it all. So hopefully this clip has uh, reviewed with you the concept of composition and composition of functions, how to put one function inside of the other, and also to find the domain. At this point, you should go on and do the problems that are associated with clip 9.